So ModCloth is an e-retailer of independently designed fashion and decor. Uh, we work with over 700 different independent designers. Um, if you look at ModCloth today, we have over 4,500 different products ranging from dresses to tops to bottoms, uh, accessories, we even have some home goods. We are working to revolutionize social commerce by getting our customer involved in everything that we do, from the merchandising of our products mm -hmm. to actually helping us pick which products we carry on the site. <laughs> yes. So social media has been a big part of the brand from the very beginning. You know, for me, I was a college student when Facebook really started to take off, so I was one of the first users um, in the U.S. and at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and for me, it was like, you know, I know that I'm on Facebook and a lot of my friends are on Facebook, so I think that Mod Class customers are probably there too. Um, so we've really had a presence on a lot of social media channels from very, very early on. And it's always been about really being able to communicate with our customer in a personal way. Um, I think that ModCloth has also done a really great job of adjusting our messages across different social media channels. So, I mean, if you think about just as, as a user of social media, you use Facebook in a different way than you use Twitter, you use Pinterest in a different way, you kind of follow different types of people. Some places you follow people that you're inspired by but you don't know in real life. Some places it's all about following the people that you actually know and maintaining those relationships. So as a company that has different social media outlets, it's important to tailor your messages and really think about how does your customer want to hear from you on this social network and how can you reach her in the best way. We really make an effort to talk to our girl where she is and we know that she uses more social networks other than just Facebook and Twitter. So we have a really active account on Pinterest, we have a lot of followers there. We have an account on Instagram because we know that our girl always has her phone with her and she really loves to be visual and she loves taking pictures. Um, we also have an account on Goodreads which is a social network for literature and book lovers. So I think it all starts with really understanding your customer. So for us, you know, our customer told us that she was on Goodreads. We saw that she was there. You know, we would ask her, like, what other social networks are you loving right now? What are you using? Where are you, you know, spending your time? Where are you gaining inspiration? Um, and so I think it's about really, again, it's about having a personal connection and really being able to be a resource for her. So it's not just about the ModCloth Goodreads account isn't about pushing books that we sell on our site, but it's about pushing books that we genuinely think she'll like. We've really taken the aspirational side of the brand and we've turned that over to our customers. So we, rather than shooting our clothing on super aspirational models and just putting that forward as the face of our brand, which, you know, we do shoot our clothing on models and we do create a look for our customer and for our marketing, um, we also really let our customers shine through. Um, so we do that through our Flickr style exchange and through the photos that our customers upload on the ratings and reviews. Way back at the very beginning of Mod Cloth, um, I was just selling one of a kind vintage clothing, so things that I would find at secondhand stores and thrift stores and that sort of thing. Um, and as the company continued to grow, um, and I started thinking about doing it full time once I graduated from school and really pursuing it as my career, um, I actually pulled our customers and I asked them that if the clothing on Mod Cloth was vintage inspired rather than actual one of a kind vintage, would you still be interested? And I think. 95 out of the 100 that we asked said yes, and that was probably the biggest learning um, because it gave me it gave me the confidence to pursue mod cloth full time. You know, even with student loans coming due, and you know, even without knowing that I was actually going to be getting a paycheck, um, it was kind of a scary thing to jump into. So we've seen incredible engagement from our customers through programs on our site and off of our site. I think on our site, our Be The Buyer program has definitely been number one. We see that the, the items that we put up through Be The Buyer get usually between 10,000 and 12,000 votes. Um, and we see between 500 and 700 comments per item. So those are huge levels of engagement. We're really getting really valuable feedback from her through that. Be the Buyer is a program that we launched in 2009, and basically we, we saw that a lot of our independent designers we were working with created lots of great samples that didn't actually go into production or get made. So we worked with them to take those samples and put them up on the site and get real customer feedback before they had to commit to production. So it's been a great way to get our customers engaged and get them 
get them engaged earlier in the process, um, and it's a great way for us and for our designers to cut down on risk because we know, we have a good feeling um, if a, an item's gonna sell, if the customer likes it or not before we've actually produced it, before we've actually launched it for sale. Our Name It and Win It contest. It's on Mod Cloth. Every item is uniquely named and described. It's something that we're really well known for. We've been doing it since the very beginning, since 2002. Um, and so we actually turn that process over to our customers. Um, and when we do this, we see huge engagement, thousands of suggested names per product. Last time we ran this contest, we had um, over 10,000 names suggested within five days. Um, and it's something that's really great because our customers are getting to participate in something that's become a hallmark of our brand and something that we're really well known for. And when she wins, she gets not only recognized by us, but also recognized by her peers. Another great innovative contest that we've run is our Make the Cut contest, which we actually did for the first time in November of 2011. And what we did was I created an inspiration board and I, we asked our customers to design into it, um, so to create items that would kind of fit the look and feel of that inspiration board and the look and feel of Mod Cloth. We saw huge engagement there, over 1,900 sketches submitted within two weeks. Um, we took the top 100 and we put them up on our Facebook fan page for voting. And then we took the community's top five and I selected two that I really loved and they are going into production. Uh, so for these designers, it's a really awesome opportunity. Their names are actually gonna be on the tag that's physically on the garment. Um, and we, they also won a $500 cash prize. So it's, it was really incredible to see um, just the levels of engagement. You know, we had everyone from like uh, an eight year old with her parents permission who kind of sketched a, a little dress and sent it in to people that are you know, professionally trained designers who just aren't working full time in the field. Yeah, so moderation at ModCloth, we really try to, you know, we cut out anything that's offensive or that is, um, you know, certain curse words and that sort of thing, um, but we really do our best to make sure that our customers' views are heard. So we think that, you know, a big part of what we build our brand on is our customers' trust, and so we don't want her to feel like, you know, she will, if she has something that's not positive to say, that it won't get through. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty rare that anything is actually edited out. I think that there is plenty of room out there. I love vintage clothing. I shop vintage on Etsy stores all the time. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think there's plenty of room. Yeah, so I think it's really important to understand your customer. Um, it's important to do a lot of market research. So kind of get out there and see, you know, is there a hole that I can be filling in the market? Um, I think it's really, yeah, really important to do tons of research. Um, look on Etsy, look on eBay. Um, if you're thinking about launching online, like think about your, your search terms that your customers will be using to find you and look at who else is available to, to them right now. Um, I think as an entrepreneur, it's so important to always be ready with your 30 second elevator pitch because you never know who you're gonna meet and like what introductions they can make and how they're gonna help you. 2012, you're going to see a lot of exciting things coming from ModCloth. We're really working on bringing out more social features on our site. Um, so taking more of that great social engagement that you see right now on the social networks out outside of our site and bringing it into the actual commerce experience. We're also working on building out our supply chain. So a big part of that is our Make the Cut contest where we're partnering with designers to bring their sketches to life and sell them on the site. There's always going to be a place for brick and mortar retail. I think that um, the social aspect of going out and actually being able to physically shop with your friends is really exciting. I think that um, I think that the traditional players are really gonna. They can't just ignore the online phenomenon. They can't ignore the mobile phenomenon. I think that they're really going to have to change, or they're going to be left behind.